Hey everyone, it's Michael here from goodereader.com. Is Color E Ink worth the hype? There's a lot of companies that have Color E readers on the market right now, uh, but it all started with E Ink Triton 1 and 2. This was almost issued a decade ago, the first Color E Ink technology. Not very many companies took a gamble on it. Pocketbook did, didn't really sell too well, but it wasn't to Kaleido did things start to uh, turn around, most notably with Kaleido 3. It has a tremendous amount of benefits over Kaleido 1 and 2, which only really had 100 PPI uh, for the color resolution. Now it's been up to 150 PPI. The front lid display has undergone a revision, so it's generally about 25% brighter, and colors look a little bit better. But it all is up to the individual companies on how they do this. Now, you probably know that books... Uh, Remarkable, Amazon, Rakuten, Kobo, and a myriad of other companies have all adopted color e-ink technology. They've done it in different ways. Let's talk about the best examples of it. Uh, the Kobo Libra Color and the Clara Color. These were e-readers that came out in 2024 and they have the color e-paper at the top of the stack. A stack is basically all these different layers on an e-reader. So think capacitive touchscreen display, the frontlet technology, um, the, the, the color e -ink technology, or the black and white e-paper. There's a lot of different stacks, and then you have, say, a layer of glass on top of it as well. And... So all these different layers make color ink look washed out. That's why if you look at some of the other brands such as Books, um, iFlyTech, iReader, HiRead, they have the color at the bottom of the stack, whereas Kobo did it at the top. So that's why, why Kobo color e-readers look ridiculously good. Uh, the Kindle ColorSoft is another example of Kaleido 3 really turbocharging the e-reader space. It's probably the best example of um, just excellent color saturation. You look at the Kindle Color Soft I have here. This is actually the Gen 2 that solved the yellow band issue. So I'm pretty happy with this model, but I really think the Kindle Color Soft is the pinnacle of Kaleido 3 right now. And I think that really what Kobo and Amazon did with their color e-readers is they have a lot more engineering power, they have a lot more money, so they're able to really do things with color e-ink that a lot of smaller companies who are on a budget aren't able to do. Don't forget Amazon and Kobo, they make the lion's share of their revenue not just selling hardware, but it's selling digital books, manga, uh, magazines, newspapers, audio books even. So, um, Pocketbook, Books, MeBook, HiRead, all these companies, they make money pretty well selling, you know, uh, hardware themselves and they don't really make a lot of money selling digital content on their devices. So there's two types of technology right now when it comes to color e-paper. Uh, there's Kaleido 3, which could display 4,096 colors. It has 25% uh, increase in uh, front lit display brightness and uh, it's more responsive. Um, 150 PPI for color, whereas Cal uh, Kaleido two, 1 and 2 could only display 100 PPI. And the, the second technology is called Gallery 3. It displays 50,000 different colors at max. But there's really only one company that's adopted this uh, tech right now is the Remarkable Paper Pro, which is a, a digital notebook designed for freehand drawing. Uh, designed for taking notes, editing PDF files, and some light reading as well. Um, it has undergone a revision uh, basically in early 2023 um, to deliver optimized performance and enhanced visual experience. It pretty well fixed some of the the problems with uh, the Big Me Galley, which came out uh, last year. And um, so they basically increased... Um, you know, everything, you know, they, they released a, a T2000, um, like little process, like a timing controller, which really helped. So 
suffice to say, Gallery 3 looks visually the best, but not a lot of companies have took gambles on it. Kaleido 3 is the industry standards. So color e-readers offer enhanced visual appeal, vibrant graphics, and a richer color uh, reading experience for graphic novels and comics. Digital textbooks and cookbooks provide additional value. However, several drawbacks include resolution, uh, limitations, and price. Don't forget, color e-readers e cost significantly more than black and white e-readers. Um, also, if you look at color e-readers, sometimes the background does not look as gray as it does on black and white e-readers. It almost looks like a... So with black and white e-readers, the background is usually light gray and the text is razor sharp black. But with Kaleido 3, they have to mix colors to create gray and to create black. So that's why when it comes to just reading the typical e-book, Sometimes it looks a little washed out for the background uh, compared to uh, the, you know, the, the black and white displays. Uh, most people use smartphones and tablets to do the reading. You know, when it comes to e-readers, it's, you look at the average person, they're reading on their phone, they're reading on their tablet. That's the, that's the average user. So, but, you know, it, it comes to a lot of problems. Um, the light that comes from behind these displays sh shines into your eyes. Um, you know, melatonin suppression. It exposure to blue light. Uh, blue light has shown uh, to decrease the ability of cells and eyes to repair themselves, uh, raising concerns about visual impairment, especially in children. Whereas with e-readers, they don't really have that. The front light display is not shining light into your eyes. It's shining evenly across the screen so that's one of the big advantages when it comes to e-readers so it's pretty well the closest that you can get to reading on paper uh, without reading on paper so the future of e-readers is it hype or a revolution well like i said there's a lot of companies that are doing it um they spend a lot of money on research um when it comes to employing this technology on their physical devices, but E-Ink has spent hundreds of millions of dollars in order to get Gallery 3 and Collider 3 in a good space. Um, so again, Collider 3 came out in early 2022, uh, but Collider 4 right now is in development, likely to be re released or at least announced uh, sometime in 2025. Likely we first we won't see products employing that until 2026, mainly because of manufacturer lead time. They have to take these new uh, screens, they have to see what they can do with them, and then to manufacturer a new e-reader with a new screen it takes like six months. So that's why it takes a little bit while. I have a feeling that the PPI will be increased from 150 PPI to 200 uh, PPI or even more. Um, you'll also see probably a performance upgrade by about 25 to 30%. So faster page turns, menus will be a little bit more responsive. Probably the front LED display will be a little bit better, although I don't think that the colors will necessarily um, be increased, but the resolution will. So what do you guys think? Is color e-ink worth the hype or is black and white e-readers something that will never be replaced? It's There's a lot of different data that goes both ways. Black and white e-readers continue to sell the most and per, you know have the lowest price point. Color e-readers, especially now that Amazon and Kobo are, are doing it, they told me that these are not just one and done products. Kobo is serious about releasing color products going forward. We might even see a color ellipsis sometime in 2025. So their, their digital note taking device. I've also heard from uh, some people who live in China who are familiar with the upstream supply chain that the Kindle Scribe will get uh, Ian Kaleido 3 or 4, whichever they figure out what works best on it. So Hype or dud? Drop a comment below. Let me know what you think. If for goodreader.com, my name is Michael, and everybody take care.